something about Ashby, sir. His garden, beautiful column, is going to seed. I haven't noticed anything wrong with it. No, of course you haven't. That's because I've been padding it with clippings from home and garden. Now, Ashby was all right until this epidemic of fire started, but now he spends all his time chasing fire engines. Chasing fire engines? What for? Well, some people have it in their blood, you know. They'd rather follow a fire than eat. Possibly Ashby is afflicted with this same mania. All right, I'll speak to him when he comes in. Now, Mr. Caldwell, I have very definite theories regarding the Garden Beautiful. Good morning, Mr. Greetings and salutations, slaves. Well, the one hole, the wanderer has returned. Where did this shrubbery come from? From your admiring and devoted public. Tokens of love and appreciation for the helpful hints contained in your most enlightening column, The Garden Beautiful. Whoop. Garden Beautiful. Garden Fiddlesticks. Two months on this sappy column and I see red at the mention of anything connected with botany. What do I care about daffodils, snails, or mealybugs? Right. But I want action, excitement. I'm a police reporter, not a florist. Out up, boy, Ashby. What do I know about Garden Beautiful? Nothing, and I care less. Mr. Colvin wants to see you, Ashby. All right, Willie, I'll be right in. You want me, boss? So, you finally condescended to come to work. Got a complaint about your garden beautiful column. A complaint? Woman writes that you advise using arsenic to kill bugs in her rotors. Well, didn't it kill them? Sure it did. But it also killed her pet poodle. And she's furious. Well, I didn't recommend it for poodles. And on top of that, Mosley tells me that you've been laying down on the job. Well? What have you got to say to yourself? Nothing, I guess. Yes, I have too. Did you ever run a Garden Beautiful column? I? No. Do you know anything about a Garden Beautiful? No, I don't. Well, neither do I. But I'm teetotally fed up writing about them. Why, I wouldn't care if the snails and mealybugs ate up every plant, shrub, and flower that ever grew. Are you dissatisfied with your job? Yes, I am. Look, I quit the Kansas City Tribune to come here because I thought there were more possibilities in a city of this size. More opportunities, more excitement, more action, more fire engines. Does it run in your family? What, fire engines? No, chasing them. Well, it's true, I, I have gone to a couple of fires, but why don't you join the fire department and go to all of them? I couldn't make the grade. I'd, uh, I'd fall down on the hook and ladder test. The what? You know, the hook and ladder test. Climbing a building on a scaling ladder. I get too dizzy. I, I can't stand the height. Yes? What does she want? Oh, she insists on seeing me about the Garden Beautiful column. Holy mackerel, maybe that's the lady with the poodle. Well, uh, tell her I'm busy. Oh, you did? And she keeps on coming back? Well, get her name and telephone number. 
Let me see. Uh, where were we? Oh, uh, on the hook and ladder. I was saying I couldn't stand height. It's hereditary, I guess. Come on now, Ashby. Come clean. Just what is your reason for chasing to all of these fires? It's just a hunch. Maybe I'm all wet, but I've got an idea there's something more than a fire bug in back of these fires. Excuse me. Are you the managing editor? I am. But who said you could come in here? Well, no one. But the girl at the desk outside said you wanted my name and telephone number. Listen, uh, lady, I'm terribly sorry about the dog. You're sorry? Yes, it was too bad about the dog. But I'll gladly pay for any damage. I can make you out a check. Or maybe you'd rather I picked you out another poodle. I didn't come here about a poodle. I'm looking for a job. I'm sorry, but there's no opening. Well, that may be. But the point is, I could turn out much better stuff than some of the people you have writing for you. You think you could, eh? Certainly I could. Take this column, for instance. The Garden Beautiful. What's the matter with it? Well, it's obvious that this writer, this uh, Hal Ashby, doesn't know a blessed thing about gardens. And from the construction of his sentences, he knows even less about grammar. What's the matter with the grammar? Read that paragraph. It's full of split infinitives. Well, how about it? Find any split infinitives? Not only split, but completely shattered. <laughs> now, if she knew anything about gardens... Of course I know. Would you recommend arsenic for killing bugs on poodles? Uh, I mean, uh, roses? Certainly not. There are too many harmless mixtures that'll accomplish the same purpose without running the risk of killing other things. That's fine. Do you know how to control scale? Read the garden of snails and mealybugs? Of course I do. That's the elementary part of gardening. That's great. So you're the one that ought to be running this garden beautiful column instead of, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, Hal Ashby. Don't you think so, Mr. Caldwell? Maybe you're right. There you are. The job's yours. I'll show her a desk, Mr. Caldwell, that she got started right. Sit down. Are you comfortable? Because if you aren't, I'll get you another chair. Now, uh, in there, you'll find about a thousand letters waiting to be answered. All kinds of questions. How to kill the scale on rose bushes. What will prevent frogs from giving birth to pollywogs in exclusive fish ponds? In fact, they're all about what to do and what not to do about nearly everything that does or does not happen in the garden. You'll find paper and envelopes in there. Well, these won't interest you. They're personal. Are you Hal Ashby? That's right. Oh, Mr. Ashby, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your job. I don't want to take it. Don't feel sorry for me. You've really done me a great favor. You saved me the grace of being my... Yeah, I had no... <laughs> Forget it. Gang, I want you to meet the new head of Garden Beautiful, Miss... Uh, uh, Helen Smith. Miss Smith. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Now that you've hired that girl, what are you going to do? One thing I can do. So if you'll write out an order for the three-day salary still coming to me, I'll do it. Hey, Ashby. Then I'm not fired? No. Okay. Thanks, I'll be seeing you. <laughs> He's off again.
Everybody. Order from the Times. I'm... Okay, go ahead. I'm sure I don't know. You see? Well, Inspector, was... anybody trapped in there? No. Lucky it was Saturday afternoon. Everyone knocked off early for the day. You know that fellow's name, Inspector? Yeah, Michael Sweeney. Much obliged. Well, that's what we're up against. Explosives stored in main buildings. Fire extinguishers that won't work. I reported this place months ago. Said it was a menace to life and property. See how much good it did. Fire traps like this ought to be condemned. Why aren't the city fire ordinances enforced? Because Mr. Smith objects. Smith? What Smith? Henry D. Smith, Smith Paper Factory. Well, what's he got objections for? Well, his bank holds mortgages on most of the buildings in this town, and improvements cost money. Well, has he got a mortgage on the city, too? And just about. He's president of the Manufacturers League, and they elected the present mayor. Oh, so that's the way it goes. Yeah. Well, thanks for the information, Inspector. Oh, Ashby. And now... I've spoken pretty freely, and, uh, well, if it gets out that I... Uh... Don't worry, Inspector, you won't be quoted. I dug it up myself, see? But when I get ready to use it, this town's gonna see a real explosion. I hope so. So long. So long. Mr. Smith's on his way in. Good morning, Henry. I'm glad you think so. What? What's the trouble, Henry? Have you read this morning's Times? Yes. Well, what are you going to do about it, Mr. Mayor? Well, what can I do? We're trying, but I can't see how one fire bug can cover so much ground. Maybe you can't. But the fact remains, someone did. And it's up to you to find out who that someone is. To read this morning's Times, one would think the administration was, was delighted to have the entire city burned to the ground by a madman. The police are doing everything in their power. I don't want any excuses. I want action. If your organization cannot run down the incendiarist responsible for these fires, our organization is going to nominate a new candidate for mayor. But we are not going to risk losing this election. I'll get after the police department. You can do anything you want, but you've got to do it now and do it quickly. Yes? The chief of police is waiting. Well, bring him in. Send him in. 
Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Did you see this morning's Times? Yes, I did. Your department has to get busy. To read that paper, one would think this administration would be happy to see a maniac set fire to the city. We're doing our best to catch him. I don't want any excuses. I want action. And unless I get it, there's going to be a new chief of police. That's all. You see, we... We're trying everything possible. What else can we do? Get Caldwell on the phone. Tell him to stop these attacks on the administration. Promise him anything. Everything, but get him to lay off. This is Mayor Bolson. I want to speak to Mr. Caldwell. Hello, Caldwell. This is the mayor. I think your paper was a little hasty in the attitude you took this morning. What's that? Yes, I read the article. Every word of it. What do you mean the police are doing everything in their power? Yesterday, while the firebug was burning down the Anchor paint factory, your police were busy arresting three small boys for shooting craps for pennies. A poor Italian peddler was arrested for selling bananas without a license, and one flapper for double parking while she left a pair of slacks at the cleaners. If you would forget these minor violations and concentrate on the important laws, we'd be better off. But, uh... In an emergency of this kind, your paper should cooperate with us instead of hindering us by playing politics. Playing politics? Now let me tell you something. Uh, now, th there's no use to uh, lose your temper, Mr. Caldwell. I merely wanted oh, to say... Oh, give me that thing. You'll be apologizing for living in a minute. Now listen to me, Caldwell. The administration is doing the best it can in the present emergency. And unless you lay off, you're not going to get one more penny's worth of advertising from any member of the Manufacturers League. Yes, this is Henry B. Smith talking. I don't care if you're the grandfather of the Smith brothers. You might be able to run the city hall, but you can't dictate to the times. Nice work, Chief. Well, you've started something, and we've got to see this thing through. I want facts, proof, evidence that we can print. Get pictures, everything. I don't care how or where you get them, but get them. I got a lead, and unless I'm crazy, you're going to get just what you want. Mr. Ashby, I want to explain. Next on the apologies, girlie. And that reminds me, I owe you a vote of thanks. Why me? Because you kicked me out of the garden, beautiful, into one of the sweetest setups that ever was. Did you want to read it? Too busy. Leave it in the desk. I'll give it boy. Hey, Ashby. Happy boy. Ashby. Yeah? Gentlemen, to see you. Send him over. Are you Mr. Ashby? That's right. I'm Dr. Dexter. I read your fire article and found it most interesting. Well, thanks very much. Won't you have a seat? Thank you. I might be able to help you. You see, I'm a scientist specialized in chemistry. That's fine. I can tell you a great deal about fires. Years of intensive stuff have acquainted me with certain mystic qualities. I'm afraid I won't be able to go into that today, old man. Perhaps you think I'm crazy. Oh, no, on the other hand, I'm sure you're not. Ashby! I'm sorry we can't continue this discussion, old fellow, but that's the editor calling me. Perhaps you would like to read my theory. Yes, that should be very interesting. That's very kind of you. Oh, you. Here it is. You can read it at your leisure. The return address is on the cover. Good day, Mr. Ashby. Good day. Are you leaving? Oh, I may be back later, Mr. Ashby. Hell, are you? I beg your pardon. H A L. Oh. Oh, it's you, Dad. 
Oh, stormy weather ahead. Helen, I want to talk to you about this crazy idea of yours. Which one, Father? This job you've taken. Oh. It's the craziest thing I ever heard. It's ridiculous, nonsensical. Preposterous and unthinkable. No, 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 no. Hang it all. I'm serious. Why do you want to work? Because I want to accomplish something on my own hook. And not just be known as Henry B. Smith's daughter. Oh, fiddlesticks. I guess I'm just not the type to sit home and twiddle my fingers. Oh, and if you must work, why not come to work for me? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad, really. But I guess paper and cardboard just don't appeal to me. Well, at least it's respectable. Which is more than can be said of that mud-slinging paper you've gone to work for. You're just prejudiced. Because the Times doesn't agree with your ideas and policies. Not at all. The only reason Caldwell hired you was to get back at me. That's where you're wrong. I'm not wrong. Mm, but you are. Mr. Caldwell hasn't the least idea that you're my father. You told him your name, didn't you? Yes, of course. Don't you realize there are millions and millions of Smiths? Yeah, I suppose so. Of course, he, he may find out who I am. But he won't if I can help it. And you're still determined to go through with this job? I guess I am, Dad. Look here. If I were a boy, you wouldn't feel this way about it. No, that's just the trouble. If you'd been a boy, but... Oh. Dad was in such a disappointment when I turned out to be a girl. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that, dear. Only, well, since I had no son... I was looking forward to a son-in-law. That's why I've been carrying Vincent along in the business. I thought after you and he were married, I... Well, I might be able to step down and let you youngsters run it. I see. And no one but Vincent would do? Oh, my dear, after all, there was... some sort of an understanding between you, wasn't there? Yes, sort of. That was before I went away to college. Four years can make a lot of difference in people. Is there someone else? No, there isn't, Dad. There isn't likely to be. Not for a while, anyway. Now, you run along and let me finish dressing. <laughs> All right. Don't be too long. Vincent and his mother may be here any moment. Speak with Mr. Ashby. This is Helen Smith. Uh, would it be too much trouble for you to call Maple 6314 in about an hour and ask for me? Why, no trouble at all, my dear. I'd be tickled to death. All right, what'd you say the number was? What? Huh? Maple 6314. Okay. And and if it wouldn't be too much trouble, would you mind saying that, that it's the paper calling and that, that they want me on an assignment right away? Yes. <laughs> you must think this is very silly of me. Why, not at all silly. As a matter of fact, I think you're showing exceptionally rare judgment. Now, let's see. You'll hear from me in exactly 60 minutes. Well, things are very different than they were when I was a girl. I remember, uh, let me see now. Well, I must have been about Helen's age. You know, and it, I... it, it's your play, Elizabeth. Oh, so it is. Uh, so it is. Uh, let me see. Uh, a diamond was made. But I haven't any. Oh, there. Why, Mom, you have trumped your partner's trick. Oh, I just can't get my mind on it tonight. I never know. Oh, well, really, I am a bit stupid. But if Helen doesn't mind, I... Oh, of course I don't, Mrs. Van Dusen. That's so sweet of you, my dear. I'm sure the children would have a much better time by themselves anyway.
glorious moon tonight, isn't it, Helen? Is it? Oh, yes. I really hadn't noticed. It's the same moon that we used to stand right here and watch before you went away. And we'd plan what we were going to do when... Oh, did we? It's been such a long time ago. And I did so many foolish things when I was a child. I'd quite forgotten. I don't think it was so silly. And I haven't forgotten either. You know, Helen, I'm just like that moon up there. Oh, are you, Vincent? I hadn't noticed it. That, that is, I mean, I haven't changed either. Oh. Helen, we... We made each a promise then. That when you were through college, we... Were... Oh, Miss Helen, excuse me. You're wanted on the telephone. Oh, thank you, Clara. Excuse me a minute, Vincent. Of course, sir. But really, I don't see how I could possibly leave now. No, you see, I have guests. Very dear and intimate friends. And, and there's nobody else. No one at all you could find. Mr. Caldwell? Helen has taken a job writing for the Times. Just a foolish whim. It won't last. Hey, not. Now, as editor of Garden Beautiful, you must attend to this in person. And get in a treatise on the color and complexion of uh, night-blooming jasmine. Well, in that case, I'll have to go. Oh, no, don't, don't come for... I mean, uh, don't send the car. No, I'll, I'll take a cab and, and save time. Say, you're really going to show up, aren't you? Okay, I'll expect you in front of the library in 15 minutes. I'll be there. I'm sorry, but I must leave. It's very urgent. It's all in the game, you know. The newspaper game, I mean. I know you'll understand, Mrs. Van Dusen. Well, of course I do, Helen. Bye, Vincent. Goodbye, Helen. Get back as soon as you can, dear. All right, Dad. You take her. Oh, Helen, just a moment. I'll take you there in my car. Oh, oh that would never do, Vincent. I mean, uh, I wouldn't think of it. You see, uh, they don't know who I am, and, and if they saw you, they might get suspicious, and, and I don't want them to know anything about me until the proper time. Uh, Dad knows all about it, Vincent. He'll explain it to you. Just a moment, lady. You're going the wrong way. Oh. The car awaited. <laughs> After you, Your Highness. Enter, Your Highness. Well, whither shall we go with? That is up to you, Ed. Mr. Ashby, I didn't mean to put you to all this trouble. I didn't think you'd be here. Well, I didn't expect you to show up either, but as long as you are here and it's up to me, Ed, I think we shall stalk the night-blooming jasmine in his lair. Oh, I see. Well, now what's the matter? You kissed me. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, you almost did. What is this, a gag? I don't know anything about a gag. Maybe I just dreamed you called me up. Oh, no. It really happened. But maybe I didn't make myself quite clear. Maybe you didn't. Or maybe I'm just plain dumb. No, it was my fault. I had to get away from my guests. So I called you. You did rescue me from being bored to tears. Oh, I'm terribly sorry on the level. But I thought it was just a stall, so I didn't want to disappoint you. Quite all right. 
I understand. Can't be all right unless you forgive me. Can you give me 40 good reasons why I should? Listen, lady, if I take you somewhere and behave like a perfect mm -hmm. gentleman the rest of the night, will you forgive me? I'll consider it. I see. There is no fire. Well, what's the idea? Well, this is just a test on to drill the company. Oh. Just a test drill, that's what I thought. <laughs> Move over. busy bee this bright and cheery morning. She does very well, thank you. <laughs> Hurry, be careful of those hell. They are very rare flowers. Rare? They look well done to me. What's the matter with them? No pep. Night blooming jasmine. No, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> no, not unless the nurseryman was kidding me. Hey, Ashby. Yeah? The old man's been looking for you. All right, I'll go right in. What are you doing tonight? Nothing that I know of. You want to do something? Maybe. How well, about the casino? Would you like to go there? I'd love to. <laughs> it's a bet then, huh? <clears throat> What's on your mind, Chief? I want to see that great story you promised me. Well, I'm not quite ready to break it yet. What's the delay? I've got nearly all the dope I need. I've just got to check up on Henry B. Smith, and I'm doing that today. You better go easy and be sure you know what you're doing. Henry B. Smith is dynamite. Yeah, well, when he reads this story, he ought to explode. Is how do you expect to accomplish all this? By getting inside Mr. Henry B. Smith's paper factory and proving a few things. Pardon me, Mr. Smith, but I caught this man snooping around the basement. Oh, thank you, George. All right, I'll attend to this. Well? Well, I suppose you know there's a law against trespassing? Yeah, I know that. And what is the reason? Plenty here. Well, you could call it curiosity. I was curious to see just how much you respected the law. Well, what do you mean? Could call a fire ordinance a law, couldn't you? Oh, are you from the fire department? You should say I'm not from the fire department or any other department connected with the city. If I were, I'd have more sense than get caught anywhere around your place. Indeed. And may I ask just who you are and what you want? Sure. I'm Hal Ashley. The Times. The Times? Oh, that's what you were doing. 
Sneaking and crawling around, stooping to anything that might furnish material for one of your lying articles. Let me tell you something, Mr. Smith. The Times doesn't have to resort to lies. We deal in facts, and if you can't face the truth, it's just too bad. If your paper would print the truth, I'd be only too happy to cooperate with it. That's fine. Do you mind answering a few questions? Not at all. Well, what do you want to know? Just why do you object to the enforcement of the fire ordinances? <laughs> That's silly. How can I prevent the enforcement of any law? Look, I know that you're the political dictator of this city. And I can prove that you control a consolidated national bank. Now, that bank has got a mortgage on the plan of every member of the Manufacturers League. Everybody knows that the League is responsible for the election of the present administration. Well, even if your theory were true, why should I object to the enforcement of the fire ordinances? Maybe you don't want to spend the money for the necessary improvements. Are you suggesting that I would see my city in ruins, merely to fatten my bank account? Sounds like that when you consider that your bank has profited from the insurance on every one of these disasters. Do you mean to insinuate? I don't have to insinuate, Mr. Smith. I'm talking facts. And the facts show that the insurance on these buildings amounted to more than they would have brought at a foreclosure. How dare you! Get out of my office. Get out of here! How dare I? Say, if you think I don't dare, you just get a flash of the times in the morning. Get out of here! enough for me already. Okay, but you'll regret it tomorrow. Why tomorrow? That's when my big story breaks. Be a big man in this newspaper racket then. Yes, sir. -y. Well, I'll be so big, I doubt if I'll speak to any of you uh, common newspaper people. As a matter of fact, I might not even talk to myself. That's the, that's the story that you told me about, isn't it? The same, and believe me, it's a Lulu. It's even better than I thought it would be. Oh, I'm glad, Hal. Really? You'll read about it in the morning. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Don't get excited, ladies and gentlemen. Everything's all right. Just be calm like I am. Uh, just a slight mistake on my part. I'll only get five, that's all. I'll be right back. around, I see that you all have just enjoyed your dinner, so I won't sing about anything to eat. <laughs> <sighs> Ebenezer Wilson was an epicure, a very funny man was he. 
He never cared for chicken or for ham and eggs. And he never did eat a fricassee, a sour, a zo, a zum, a bo, de yo, de yo, do, de yo. <laughs> he never cared for turkey hash or for possum. And he never cared for coon. Ha! The only thing he ever seemed to relish, he'd order every evening, morning, night, or noon, which was, uh, which was, uh, uh, well, it wasn't apple pie, but it was, uh, uh, Buckwheat cakes are cooking on the bill, say buckwheat cakes. Lord, ain't they fine? Buckwheat cakes, sweet the music down the fiddle, sweet as am the water from the water. That's the water from, woo! That's the water from, woo! <laughs> Not Magnolia, I don't know no the people, the Bible, the people, Bible, boom, boom, the right to bring in a cat, boom, boom, dear, boom, says, boom, bark, can't bark, hit him a brawl, rig it, rig it, rust, we're not allowed to cuss, we're never less must confess nothing the matter with. Yes, it was. You know, you don't have to be so high hat tonight because your story doesn't break until tomorrow. I'm sorry, honey, I was thinking. Let me help you. I'm a pretty fair thinker myself. Well, uh, if a fellow's considering matrimony, what should he expect? Trouble, I should think. No, I mean, what should he look for if he wants to get married? A girl to... It's going to be great when I take you home, Mom. Meet your wife. And I'm going to get a thrill when I take you home and say, Daddy, look what I found. I know he'll love you. I'll have this man, Hallas, be arrested. He can't print stories like that about me. I'm afraid that won't do much good. The damage has been done with the men, sir. There's nothing whatever for the men to be worried about. That's what I try to tell him, sir. When they read that paper saying the plant was a death trap? Just a cheap trick to boost circulation. The Smith factory has stood for a good many years and is still standing. It's as safe now as it ever was. One wild newspaper story isn't going to turn the building into a... into a fire trap overnight. I can see your view perfectly, Mr. Smith. George. Arrange a get-together party in the factory club room any night you like. I may have something of interest to tell the employees. That'll be fine, Mr. Smith. Come on. I want you to get out a warrant for Carlwell's arrest. I'm going to put him and this smart elect reporter in jail. Can you make it stick? Stick? This is the most scurrilous attack ever made on a public official. A pack of the most infamous lies. But can we prove that they are lies? He practically accuses me and my supporters of arson. Get Carlwell of the Times on the phone. Read it yourself. He practically accuses me, Smith, the Consolidated National. I've read it, and it very carefully avoids making any direct accusations. Anything that we could hang a libel suit on. And I'll show him he can't get away with this. Hello, Carwell. This is the mayor. What do you mean by printing those wild rumors about me? We don't print rumors. We print facts. And those facts speak for themselves. What's that? What do you mean, lay off? We've just started. Either you print an immediate retraction of that infamous article, or I'll haul you into court for libel. Great. We wouldn't ask any better than to air the whole case in court. That'll hold him for a while. That's the stuff, Chief. Now, uh, there's a little something that I'd like to talk to you about, uh, 
But you think after that last story, I ought to get a little raised? So, that's what comes from giving you a little pat on the back. Do you think you deserve a raise in salary? Why, sure. Oh, I'm not going to ask you for enough to bankrupt the sheet, just to... Oh, about $25 more a week for a starter? For a starter? Maybe you'd like a little trip to Europe thrown in as a sort of uh, bonus. Hey, that's a great idea, Chief. Especially now that I'm thinking of getting married. Getting what? Getting married, spliced. Oh, you know a reporter can't give his best to his paper without the restraining influence of a wife. Oh, so there you are. Well, darling, congratulations are in order. How dare your paper print such libel? Libel? <laughs> Don't you worry about the times, my dear. We know just how far we can go without getting tripped. How many reputations you can blast, you mean? How much mud it can fling? How many lives it can ruin? Hey, wait a minute. That's great stuff. I wrote it. I suppose you think I don't know who did it. And you bragged about it. Gloated over, over slandering an innocent man. Innocent? Listen, Helen, there isn't one of that bunch of old highbinders knows the meaning of the word. That's tame compared to what they're gonna get. You! I'm gonna rot them all out and show them what Smith really is. A grasping, scheming, conniving old crook that wouldn't even... Stop it, stop it, I won't have it. I won't have you speaking like that about my father. Oh, now I understand perfectly. Don't let a thing like that get you down. We have work to do. Get the dope on the insurance Smith's bank has collected to date. We'll hit them in the morning. Wait a minute, Chief. I, I think we better lay off. What do you mean, lay off? Well, uh, I may be all wrong about Smith and... Anyway, I didn't know it was going to turn out like this. I'm in deep enough now. So, that's it. You want to run out of me. Lay down on the job. Very well. I'll have someone else take it over. Report back at the Garden Beautiful. See a fellow named Dexter. Just a minute, Mabel. Does Mr. Dexter live here? Yeah, but I don't know whether he's in or not. He's always in and out, but you can see for yourself. His room is up at the top of the stairs, and if he ain't in, you can wait. Thank you. Oh, uh, his door's open. Hello, Mabel. Did you think I got lost? <laughs> no, it was just some man that came in. No. No, you don't know him. Honest, you don't.
a ride, Mr. Smith. Splendid. Members of the Smith factory family, I have a surprise for you. We have an addition to our family in the person of my daughter, Helen, who is coming to work for us. <laughs> say something. Thank you very much. I don't know what to say except that I hope you're as happy to have me here as I am to be one of you. I saw him last night. You know, I think he's better looking than Clark Gable. Mm-hmm. And did he show me a good time? <laughs> yes, Mabel. Uh, well, I have to go now. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Mabel. You just die when you hear this. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi, Mabel. Sorry, this is report. The Smith paper pack is the next thing on his list. Yeah, I'm on my way over there right now.
I've got one. My daughter's in there. Hey, come back here. Reporter, fire hero, aids in saving Smith's daughter, leads police to firebug. Boy, hot stuff, eh? How's it feel to be a hero? <laughs> I'll cut it out. Your mugs make me sick. Shy <laughs> and modest. That's the way we like our hero. Sure, that's the way. <laughs> Hell, Dad wants to talk to you. I'll see you in a moment. What do you want? Listen to me, Caldwell. I have taken your abuse long enough. Now I am going to get even with you. What do you think you're going to do? I am going to take away from you the only real man you ever had working for you in this place. Why, you can't do that. That boy belongs here. You wouldn't be happy, Mrs. working on a paper. That's what I thought. So I'm going to make him manager of my new paper factory. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. Ashby! Ashby! You're going to take him away. Ashby isn't here, sir. He's left. Where the deuce did he go? Well, he told me to tell you he'd gone out to pick some night-blooming jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> ¶¶ 